shit show, 20s were a blurry part Horse of a different color, tell me when the derby starts Warrior, figure that the game need a curry spark Every time I got a pen, you bound to get some yoga flame Bar rates and repetition, pictures couldn't Welcome show Welcome to the True Exact Show, I am here with the King of the Diet champ Real deal, out in Pittsburgh right now, how you doing man? I'm doing all right, man. I'm doing all right. Hopefully, everybody's safe out there. Yeah, hopefully, you're staying safe and shit. Um, one of the things I like to do here is I like to I like to get the battle rappers I grew up watching um, to explain their story of how they up, came up. Like, I had Nino Bless on last week. I had Chase Moron. Mm -hmm. People in that culture, just to try to, like, I feel like there's no outlet for you guys to talk about, you know, this is how I got into rap. I don't know stories about any of you. Though. I just watch your battles. We watch your battles. But, like, I think like it's a it's a good thing for you guys to talk about how you got in it and how, where you're at now and like what pursued you to the route of music. So we'll talk talk about a young Trevor, a young real deal. How'd you get into this? So I um like coming out of high school, man, I was rapping and stuff, right? Um, I was always you know lunch table roasting. That was kind of the thing. I do remember like the earliest battle videos I was watching was like Jin. And I thought it was so crazy. Like, I was enamored yeah. by it. Um, but at the time, Pittsburgh was pushing Wiz. Like, that was the push. Mm -hmm. And uh, Wiz and me are, like, obviously completely opposite kinds of rappers. So I'm like, man, I got to do something to catch people's eyes. So, you know, I got involved with the battle circuit. You know, I started doing, uh, you know, I, I, I found out about Jump Off. Mm -hmm. And I was like hooked, man. I was like, this is crazy. So I, you know, I found out then through Jump Off about Scribble Jam. Yes. Yeah. Um, I was able to get down Scribble Jam in 07 mm -hmm. and battle. And then I did it again in 08. And then 08 was right when Grind Time was kind of jumping off. So then I got hooked up with Sunny Bamboo and entered the Grind Time Midwest, man. So that was like, but, um, yeah, man, I was doing it, you know, here in Pittsburgh, like, you know, which is not a big battle rap scene, but you know what I mean? I was the dude here and then tried to find a bigger pond, you know what I mean? Um, and that gained me more exposure towards my music, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Because when I started battling, like, you know, it, it's weird nowadays, there's people that don't even rap. They're like, I'm not a rapper. I yeah, 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 yeah. Like, that's a wild, you know, but I guess times have changed. Uh, I got to ask, too, when you were coming up during the whole Scribble Jam era, what's the furthest you went in Scribble Jam? Like, um, what round? Because I know so, there was like, three limbs and there used so to be... So here's what's first. funny, bro. Like, uh, I used to advertise that I made it to the Scribble Jam Suite 16 twice. <laughs> yeah. Without telling people that it starts with 32 people. So, like, reality is... All right. Yeah. I made it to the second round. Um, hey, it sounds first, good, though. It sounds yeah, good. Well, so the thing that was fire about Scribble Jam, though, was, man, you had to win to get a plate. Mm -hmm. And so coming from Pittsburgh, I had to, I went down to Cincinnati, and they had, their, they had a Cincinnati prelim. Like, you know, if you didn't know about it or whatever, like, this was the prelim for you to join. So I joined, and I won, like, two battles in the prelim, and I lost in the last battle that would have got me on the Scribble Jam stage, right? But it was like make some noise for this guy, make some noise for this guy. Yeah. It was real close. PH was the host. Okay. RIP, the GOAT. And um, so the dude grabbed me after and said, look, man, be around. He said, look, come tomorrow, be around the gate, man. We'll, you know, we'll see if we can get you in because you was, you was dope. You deserve a plate. So technically, like, in 07, I didn't really win a spot on. I did get on. I won in the first round, lost in the second. I lost at the source, bro. Yeah, I remember that. Were you in – did he say something about, like, your clothing or some shit? It was a long time ago. I remember watching Yo, it. Yo, he, he did, man. He, 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 he cooked me bad. The, the second round was, 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 was vintage. So he was so good, bro. Yeah. Like, I, there will never be in my – like, no gray hoodie lux, no whatever. There will never be as intimidating a presence as the source was at Scribble Jam. It was, just, it was ridiculous, bro. Like, yeah. it was – but anyway – um, so he beat me in 07 and then in 08, I actually did win. I won the, a prelim in Cleveland, which was crazy to be from Pittsburgh and won a, a Cleveland prelim. I won that. And then I lost, I won in the first round, lost in the second round, the kid twist. Wow. Was, yeah. Yeah. Right. Wow, there's a name. 
Yeah, but that was the that was the dude O eight, which the footage has never there's been a couple battles come out. The source just absolutely moonwalks through the whole scribble gym. Uh, he ridiculous. won he's won what? He won three times or he twice? Won twice. Twice. He won twice. Okay. The my first year he lost. To Franco, right? To Did he Franco. lose to Franco? Bro, so my the O eight year he beat in a row, he beat uh, he beat someone in the first. He beat Fresco, Tantrum, Kid Twist, wow, or Kid tantrum. Twist, Tantrum. Damn. And then I think, I want to say to win it all, he might have beat No Can't Do or something. But, like, okay, bro, he was just, he was on one, dog. It was, it was, it was wild, yeah. Now, do you miss those days, though? Remember, like, we, we talked about this in the one interview. Like, when we were growing up, I mean, I used to rap a little bit. When we were growing up, you had to cipher, right? You had to prove you were good. Like, and I always wonder that, like, do you feel like that's a lost art? Like, kids today or these up-and-comers, like, they don't they don't cipher anymore. You don't really have to showcase your ability. Because let's be honest, when you were in high school and you rapped and you, you weren't good, you kind of you, – you got made fun of, and you fucking had to go home and work on your craft a bit. Like, when you battled the source, did you leave that battle like, all right, I got a lot to work on, you know what I mean? No, I, I'll tell you the, the honest truth, man. When I left the source battle, I had thought, like, oh, man, I killed it. I'm like, he won. Okay. So people, people are going to be like, no, this is this – is, you know, this was my first experience to getting internet exposure. Gotcha. So – I'm like, people are going to be like, yo, the source, because I knew who the source was. We yeah, all, yeah. I'm like, yo, I lost to the goat. I'm like, but people are going to be like, damn, this dude killed it. We should check for him. But reality was when I went home, I didn't even have a computer, bro. I had to go to the library and punch the dip, right? So I go online and I can't, I don't know who was dropping these scribbles in for that they dropped me at the source. And here I, I click on it. I'll never forget. And I'm waiting to read like, yo, Source one, or this was close, or dude, the yeah. red and black is nice. Nope, it was like, yo, dude, the red and black is a faggot. He <laughs> kill himself. And bro, I couldn't believe it. I'm like, yeah. I really had to be like, oh my god, maybe this ain't for me. You know what I mean? Maybe this is. I was not prepared. So I, I, I owe all the credit. Really, the next year, you know, it, it took me. A, I'm not gonna lie, it took me a couple of months yeah. to get. You know, like, all right, man, nah, yeah. you know. And uh, Sonny Bamboo, like I said, he saw me a scribble before I even did the battles. He's like, no, you're dude who battled the source last year with the red and black. He was like, yo, you're nice, bro. And I was like, yo, thank you. I'm crazy you saw that because I definitely lost. He's like, bro, it's the source. Who didn't lose the dude? He's like, I lost to him in 06. He's like, yeah. And I remember like that, you know, and, and, and my whole perspective changed. So um, I, don't, I don't think it's necessarily lost art. It's weird to see the full circle that it's that like now people are tagging me in videos like check this dude out he freestyles all, like they just show yeah. him words and i'm like bro we were doing that shit yeah. like not to downplay it i get what you're like, saying yeah like that's, it's honestly that's i didn't to downplay it too i didn't to downplay it too but like i always said it's a lot easier than people think it yeah, really yeah. is yeah, when you, because a lot of those bars, people don't understand, it's a lot of filler till that next word of shows course. up. It's all filler. And if you notice a lot of those guys, they repeat the same words a lot. Oh, as like some a, of them it's say, dude, it's a if you have the, if you have yeah. the confidence, you can, you can steamroll over literally saying nothing, nonsensical yep. shit. Yep. Because it's just a matter of... Yep, yeah. it's it's like it's and I'm a and I'm a and I'm a throw a lighthouse out, you know, yeah, like I'm grabbing the mic, you know, you yeah. have to say, yeah, grabbing yeah, the mic, yeah. I'm rapping it right, I'll grab an yeah. axe and it's light, and yeah. I'm a and I'm a oh grabbing a beer, I'm rapping it's queer, you know what I mean? Like when I come through, when I come oh, yeah, through, it's yeah. always the best. I'm about to, I'm about yeah. to, I'm about to, is a goodie too. Yeah, I'm about. To. It's all crutches, but like, you know, it's not to take anything away because it's not an easy thing to do, man. It's one. of it really is. It's a pick a quarter trick, bro. I'm okay. not gonna lie. I don't All know right. how to do the pick a quarter trick. If someone pull a quarter behind these big ass ears, you could probably pull a fucking half dollar. But you got what I'm saying? Like, I'm not super impressed with freestyling the way some people are. I do recognize. I'll tell you what I'm impressed by as far as freestyling is people that can freestyle and make it sound effortless as far as it could be on a beat. Um, okay. I e no can do. Big Cannon, like those dudes, mm -hmm. I've heard freestyle, and I've been like, ooh, like they don't have the cookie cutter formula, 
you can literally throw in any beat and you know what I mean? So Yeah, so there's no I'm about to No, nah, no. Nah. And when I come through and I'm ripping it and you know then you know nah. ripping the mic, gripping it tight, it's all nah. yeah. None of that shit. I have to ask you though, so the one of your battles that I always go back to when somebody asks me, like, oh, give me a battle. If someone new is getting into the battle scene and they say, hey, man, pick a battle. I always go to the B Magic and you won from eight mm -hmm. years ago. I legit think that is one of the most replay value battles of all time. Mm -hmm. I really do. So I have to ask, how did you enter that battle? Because that was URL, correct? Mm -hmm. So how do you enter that battle and prepare for like that URL crowd when you were like king of the dot or grind time? Was there a difference with the crowd? You know what I mean? I mean, bro, there, there's always been this boogeyman stigma about URL crowds. Mm -hmm. Like that they'll, they'll, they'll come up on stage and stab you if you're not good or some shit. It does not. Bro, like, oh, this dude, he wouldn't survive on a URL stage. Which it's you like, hear a dude, lot. You do hear that a lot, though. Like, yeah, I don't know it's like, actually, some of those crowds are far easier. Really? Um, so, basically, I had the Cortez battle that caught uh, URL's eye because Cortel was in the, Cortez was in the fold. Um, and I had been talking to Norbs. Norbs is actually – that's why I'll never say a bad thing about that dude. That dude, mm -hmm. you know – uh, was the first one to be like, yo, man, I'm talking to, to you know, the, the, the people here and, you know, we want you on. So uh, I actually hadn't even, I had no idea who B-Magic was. And then they're like, would you battle through B-Magic? He's pretty dope. And then I, I remember sitting there, I watched, you know, John John or something. I'm like, yo, man, he's, yeah, he's solid. Yeah, that'll be cool. And uh, I, it's weird because I never realized, like, people think, URL disrespects King of the Dot. Yeah, I, never, I honestly never got that vibe just as a fan watching. I think those two leagues are pretty, like, cordial. And I think they help each other out. Like, it just no, comes I mean, But you know how there, there's the whole, like, yeah, oh, yeah. if it then happened on URL, blah, 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 doesn't it's happen. It's not, yeah, yeah. What, what, I'm, what I'm getting at is, bro, there was zero respect for grind time uh, yeah. on URL. They were like, yeah. this shit is jokey, blah, 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 blah. So when I had the B Magic battle, you know, I sat, I watched these battles and, and all that good stuff. And I, I really prepared, man, the way I would anywhere. The only big thing was I had to address the elephant in the room. And you did. That was an amazing, and, and, your first bar. Yeah, right, right, and I had to do it in the least corny way. Yeah. Um, or funny or put, put some kind of spin on it. Mm -hmm. and, that, and it just happened to work out, man. It's one of those things where all the – all the puzzle pieces fell into place, man. It, it, you know what I mean? Like, did you ever think worked. like, did you ever think like, oh shit, if this doesn't work out, it's gonna bomb? Like, you know what I mean? Did you go into that line like, hey, Smack, what's the slogan? And like, oh, please let him say what he's about. I to thought, say. well, I thought Smack would say it. Yes. You know what I mean? Like, I thought I didn't know. I don't even know who the fuck. Thank God. I think the fans did. Say, if I ever see him in a bar, I owe him some beers. <laughs> Whoever those dudes were in the back, yeah, that were like clearly agitated. Um, but no, I. I mean, thank God. And if, if you see it in the video, I'm like, what? Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, thank yeah. God, right. So, um, no, I mean, I, to me, now looking back at it. Imagine if I say, you know, that and it's crickets, you know, where am I going to go from there? Yeah, I just kind of um, improvise there. I, I think what helped is I started with a rebuttal and the crowd definitely. What was the re what was the rebuttal again? The um, uh, it was something about um, he had say he was he was on me about teaching. And so I, I did some like a magic scheme kind of with like magic players or whatever. Yeah, it wasn't the craziest thing I ever spit, but it was, you know, I was you know, trying to show the crowd that I, I could bring that aspect mm -hmm. to the stage. And, and uh, yeah, man, so it, it was, you know, it was it was all uphill from there or all downhill from there. And, you know. When but, you, now, when you, you said you didn't know B-Magic, like, did you know what you were getting into with the name flips? You know what I mean? So like, here's what's crazy. I, um, I had actually, I, the, I battled B-Magic, Big K's PG was the night before. Okay. So I went to the PG. It was in this real small little venue or whatever. And D-Magic was there. And uh, I'm like, yo, what's up, man? He was like, and he just was like, Shh, I'm about to fuck you up. Like, literally. And I never met this dude in my life. And I respected it. I was like, all right, man, that's cool, you know. 
He was like, bro, you don't even understand. I'm like, all right, cool. And uh, it's funny because when I watch it back, his first round is so incredible. Like, but it it's, didn't, I didn't feel like that on stage. You know what I mean? Like, and I've been in front of some rounds where I was like, oh, shit, when is this going to end? This is fucking rough. I felt like it was good. I just felt excited. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? But looking back, I'm like, damn, I'm glad I didn't overthink because his first round was, was really, really, really well, good. I, I, the, the thing I always say, like, about that battle is why it's so good. I could literally watch it, like, 20 times, and each time it's a different winner. I really can't call it. I, yeah, I it's good, I, man. It's like, yeah. all right, I watch it. Damn, B-Magic's Nicolas Cage line. Oh, my God. Yeah. Like you, yeah. and, then, and then your bird perched on my wood like the Cardinal logo line. And then when you go into that fucking, like, white national news thing, it just yeah. – so, so many different fucking aspects uh, in it. So it, it really was a phenomenal battle. One of the best I've ever seen, honestly. And, and I, I wish I kept up with it more, but, like, the older, the older I get, it's kind of hard to keep up with the newer, younger cats and oh, stuff. Oh, yeah, 100%. It's so hard. It's there's so many new battlers now that like yeah. I kind of just stick to the names that I grew up watching. You know, I I, I wish I had more times and stuff. So who was your toughest opponent though? You said like oh rounds you're just sitting there like god damn yeah. man, like and I know you battled the source again, right? Was that at Grizzlemania? Mm -hmm. That was really tough. Um, <sighs> I think you actually gave us an overtime round in that one. I did. Yeah, yeah. I lost in overtime. I lost three to two. Um, I think when I say toughest, you know, it's, it's battlers that like head iced is tough mm -hmm. because there's like, he has like just a, 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 almost like a force field of like, you could say the hottest shit. It's almost like, like you, you, you don't want to be jokey joke, but then you're like, man, this might be the only avenue. Like Mac Myron is another one because Mac Myron's really funny too. He's unapologetic. He's a crowd favorite instantly. Um, the source is tough because you realize he never slacks, and you know you don't know what he's gonna say. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? And you know it's gonna be just so good. Like you, that. You know what I mean? Um, uh, Chilla battling him, you know. I have to ball. ask you about that. So you battled Chilla three times, right? Yeah. So the last two were for the title? The last two were for the title, yeah. Okay, so when you won the first one, there was obviously some, like, uh, controversy. Or the people thought it could have went either way. Did that make you prepare more for the second battle? Like, kind of like Rocky and Apollo and Rocky too. Like, now I have to whoop his ass. You know what I mean? No, um... The only thing that fucked with me about the rematch, so, like, the rematch I had proposed, I thought it was a cool idea. I thought it was some G shit, some, some shit people weren't doing. Like, all right, let's run it back. Um, and I've already talked to Organic and everybody about this, so this is nothing new, but their presentation, their unveiling of it was so poor to me. Like, mm -hmm. it made it look like, I was giving another shot out of, like, I thought I didn't win or some, some whack-ass shit. Because wasn't it – it was real, like, close together, right? It yeah. was yeah. – Yeah, I mean, it was within a couple months. And I said, yo, um, why don't we run it back? It'll be a battle rap first. It'll be something cool. And everybody was on board. And when they unveiled it, though, they had a very a sketchy, shaky-ass way of doing it, man. Like – um. I was very upset about it, man. Like, I'm not going to front. Like, they basically, they, they interviewed, like, four people at the beginning, and all of them were like, oh, Chilla took that. They need to run that back. All four of them or whatever. Really? Yeah. And then they were like, the trilogy. And I'm like, that's whack. You should have had half for me and half for dude. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. What, like, you just made it look. Anyway, long story short. So I wasn't. At that point, I'm like, yo, man, I'm not that, you know, obviously I prepped and I was, but I, I didn't get that vibe from it. You know what I mean? I was just like, yo, let me, let me pen some cool shit. I wasn't, you know, I think that might have taken some of the, 
desire out of it. I, I love the one, the round you had in the second title match with like, because I went back before this and watched a few rounds just to like fucking, you know, get my brain right. Um, the big, see, what I love most about like lyricism is when you wrap the same formula in that one whole bar. So when you went with like Big Smoke Country to Klitschko done the gizmo. I love it. Oh my God. And I the love Min, Min no Guppy, like come on, that might be, that might be the one of the best schemes I've ever heard you fucking spit, honestly. And I love that round, that, bro. When you bro, write like, that, yeah. When you wrote that, every, you know when you hit bars and you're writing like, mm, like this is going to fucking land. Like you just know yeah. that. And every bar is a is a punch, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, and uh, I, I don't know, man. I just, I, I remember writing it and I remember thinking two things. I said, either this is going to, crowd reaction be dry until a certain spot or it's going to be dry and they'll realize what i'm doing is a, is a vintage ilmac kind of deal right okay so i can see with, that yeah right I can with see ilmac that. you're like oh shit he's still on the same damn yeah. so that was the hope shout you know shouts shouts to mac like that's the hope yeah it's like yo he's still like you said he's still on that big smoke country wishbone and it it kind of caught that you oh, by the way, yeah, that Wishbone line was phenomenal. Uh, I One of the greatest theme songs in television oh, history. Oh, my God. Yeah, like, yeah like, we seriously. had to watch that in, in class and shit. Yeah, that's and that's the what best. I'm saying. Like, if, if they didn't understand, if, if, like, the thing that was cool about layering it like that is if they didn't get one, there was punches to come. Like, you know what I mean? The um the, the class act, but don't hit no Dougie. Dougie Fresh, mm -hmm. the Dougie Cali District. You know what I'm saying? Like, all of it was super, super layered. But, you know what I mean? That's why I always say, like, man, and I hate to be like, crowd wasn't fuck or nothing like that, but <laughs> crowds aren't, when people think, that, like, a cra the crowd, you know, the crowd, I mean. Well, does it suck, though, when, like, because, you know, man, like, you have the reactions in your head when you're rapping, and, like, you're like, this one's going to land. Did you ever, like, say one that didn't really land, and you're like, Shit. Oh, yeah. You know, oh, and yeah. Like, how do you – is it kind of being a comedian, just kind of like, all right, you got to improvise now or just move the fuck on? Like – So you – sometimes you develop little things, man. Like one of the things that I developed is uh, a kind of pompous attitude mm -hmm. to – because no one wants to appear stupid. Mm -hmm. So, like, that's why you'll watch a battle and some people be like, y'all got to catch up. And maybe you're like, what do you mean? Blah, blah, blah. Like, but you notice that shit works. Because you don't want to be the one that that got to catch up, so right. now you're ready to just react on bar four, eight, twelve, and sixteen. It, it's a cheap tactic, but you know what? If you're like you said, I mean, you're rapping some cold ass shit, and people ain't on board, you know what yeah. I mean? Sometimes so like, you got to throw in fan, some little conversational yeah. shit. As a fan, you don't want to be the asshole who didn't understand. Of it. course, of <laughs> hey, course. Man, you get that? Oh yeah, definitely. Like yeah, you ain't got to run it back for me. By the way, do you but like it works the whole both ways, man? Like it works. I've been in some crowds before where somebody said something so fucking trash mm -hmm. and people have lost their shit. And I literally been like, man, I'm going to get a beer, man. I remember direct Durant was watching a battle yeah. with direct and somebody was, uh, somebody was saying some hot ass trash. And I told direct, I said, man, this is trash. I'm getting some beer. He was like, bro, you are the worst person to watch a battle with. I'm like, Yo. you know what? I'm with you. That's like me and the dances in high school. When the electric slide would come on, I'm out. I am out. I am Good, not. Bro, by the way, this is uh, Brian. He's joining us, real deal. So, what's Brian, going on, man? Yo, what's goody with you, brother? We what's were just up, talking Good about like we were just talking about uh, when a punch didn't land um, and stuff like that. Uh, when you like write it down, I was comparing it. Brian here, he does comedy, so like when you write a bar or a comedy thing and a joke doesn't land, a punch doesn't land, how do you go about it? So he's saying you got to just provide a pompous attitude, man. Pretty much tell the crowd to go fuck themselves, right? Like, you're stupid, I'm not. That's and how you got to You got to keep, yeah. you, as long as you keep your confidence high it, it, with anything, I mean, people will get behind that pretty much. So real, I got to ask really quick. Um, so do you, because you grew up in the Grizzle Mania area, the grind time area, Era, era, I'm an asshole. The grind time era. So, do you prefer the short battles or these 50 minute ones you got to do? Like, you know, is there. I, I prefer a middle ground. Like I a prefer, 29 so, minute? So, the, the minute rounds are super short and these fucking marathon rounds are too long. Yeah. 
get two two minutes with a two and a half cutoff, man. I'm cool, man. You yeah, know, I gotta say, I, like, even when you turn it on, like, and it's like a sixty minute battle, like, as a fan, you're like, oh man, I really got a lot like, of time to invest. In. I gotta watch it in segments. You know what I mean? Like, it's That's tough. A lot. Bro. Not to mention the first six minutes is advertisements of some shit. So I got to fast forward on people talking, but it is what right. it is. Do you prefer, think, like, the three-minute ones? I think three minutes cool if people stick to three minutes. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Like, three minutes ain't bad, but once you, you, you know, motherfucker is carpe diem and the timekeeper and just fucking spitting and rapping and rapping and rapping. Listen, I don't give a fuck how good you are. I'm not necessarily trying to hear you rap for fucking ten minutes. Bro, well, it's like you know it's mean? like an actor. Like I don't care how good De Niro is. I'm not watching a four hour movie, man. You know, really? like it is what but it you, is. You don't want to watch The Irishman? No. Not again. No. Not again. <laughs> overrated. Very um, grossly, bro. Thank you. Oh. Thank you. Terribly overrated. Overrated. Um, I don't think that's one of the biggest problems, though. If I'm being honest with you, what would you think? Full disclosure, man. If I you don't mind, if you don't mind, unnecessary, unnecessary gassing. Mm -hmm. People that aren't in the battle trying to be more a part of the battle. Okay. Um, like I've had like like, 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 like grabbing like, people by their like motherfuckers yeah. be bushing like like it looks like a school bully and shit. Like they got them by their <laughs> collar when they just like, fam, that's a lot. That's a lot. When, after every bar, they looked at the audience and said, I'm nice. I'm nice. Or their well, friend I mean, says it. I'm not even mad at the person for doing that if, if, you're grant, if you can't rap over that, if you're granted that. But mm -hmm. um, there will be people like you know have heard that rapper's bars, and they're still grabbing them the fuck up. Uh, don't get me wrong. Reaction is good, and, you know, you're having a little corner, a little bit of gas going. It's cool, man, but it, it – one of the biggest problems is just people are just fucking doing a whole lot, man. Like mm -hmm. it's overdoing it. Yeah, bro, it's bad. It's very bad. Like, but you know, um, people, I feel like people do that because they're they're lacking in their bars. I, you know what? I can't even. They become such a, a main part of the battle at that point. I don't even fucking like what that person said. It's or, or like you know, the whole talk to them or say it again and shit. Like we get it. Yeah, but motherfuckers are saying anything now. Like they're anything. they're saying out anything, yeah. and it's, like it's just rap, just rap, just rap. You know what I mean? Let me get these bars off, man. <laughs> uh, one more, a couple more things. Um, when you got the Ilmac battle on, uh, that was verse the what, what what event was that? The Bud and Hollow event? Ether? No, it was um or the, Cassidy the Diz. Cassidy Diz one. Yeah, so you were in the arena for that, right? Like, so you guys battled first. Uh, what like were you guys pissed that battle never took place there? What like what exactly happened in that so arena? So they battled. They they went through a round. Diz and yes. Cassidy actually had a round. Um. Cassidy's round was not catching love. Like, it was not. I really think, I strongly believe that what happened to Diz is one of the biggest, like, kind of setup deals of all time. Like, really? Diz would have murdered Cassidy on that big stage. Like, now don't get me wrong, the crowd seemed tired anyway. Yeah. Um, well, don't forget, those events that, like, even Smack or King of the Dot, those, these are six-hour events, right? Eight, like, so the crowd yeah, is... that's a long so, time. Like, I bought some of the pay-per-views, and, like, we've watched, you know, you're there at 9 p.m., and, you know, the, like, disaster cannabis battle doesn't happen to one in the morning, and you're just... Right, right, right. Watching. So I can't imagine being there, not able to take a piss as a fan, you know? Uh, it was as so... but. The, but like I said, I, I believe Cassidy had got through a round, man. It was bad. And um, couldn't have been as bad as disaster and cannabis. <laughs> <laughs> so prime example. Now, I wasn't there for that. But if you go back and watch, cannabis says the Tom Cruise mom shoes. Mm -hmm. People reacted in the crowd. Yeah. yeah. People reacted. That's, that's, why you, that's why I always say. It's not about what the fuck the crowd did. Like, people thought, people, ooh, and the crowd, like, what do you mean, ooh? The, the realest motherfucker there was Arsenal. He was the first one to go on Twitter and be like, yo, this motherfucker is spitting some ass. But I think it was just the shock at that time. Like, wow, they got can you guys got cannabis to rap. Yeah. You know what I mean? You and know you what? Could... I, I, I get it. And yeah. I think they should have a little bit of wiggle room. 
Tom Cruise mom shoes is not with no, not good. Nonsense. You know, well, I think he started the battle with like slaughterhouse. What you talking about? I bought enough rhymes to knock all four of them out, or something like that. And you were like, all right. And then he went with that and pulled that. And is that what he started with? I yeah. thought he started with Tom Cruise mom. Oh shoes. no, you're right. You're right. And he might have went into the slaughterhouse line. Honestly, it was like eight years ago. I don't really remember. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I haven't watched it since. There'd be yeah. no reason. I to remember do. the battle of that night. Honestly, was probably Ergen DNA. Was an amazing battle that night. Yeah. Bender, 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 Bender and um, who who did he battle? Bender, Sid Vicious, Sid Vicious. Yeah, great battle. Yeah, very good Bender battle. Was fucking on one, bro. So I know Brian's wondering about this, and I I know like because when I said like even to my wife, she, my wife's a teacher, right? So sure. and, and I mentioned to her, yeah, she's working from home now. You know what I mean? Just it, it's tough with all this stuff going on, but uh, so. She said, there, how could a battle rapper be a teacher and get away with the stuff, right? So I was like, you know what? I'm going to fucking ask him. And I have to ask, and I am in case she's listening, I have to ask, are you ever nervous with the shit you're saying? Never. Nope. Not nope. at all. And, I'm, and I've, had some, I've had some funny, like, run-ins. Like, mm -hmm. um, I've had, like, tons of parents and shit. Like, yo, man, keep your da -da -da, who you battling next? So you, you know, but like, all that. My thing is I keep the two separate. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, I really don't – you know, like, if kids ask me, like, oh, do you be rapper? Like, nah, it's somebody else. It must be so somebody you else. Admit, you <laughs> don't even admit it, even though they know? No, I mean, it depends to their level of knowing. Like, if they're sure, like, their dad is like, yo, this is him, my song, blah, 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 blah. Because you yeah. got to understand all my kids got iPads now. Like, there was a lot yeah. of kids, fifth yeah. graders coming up to me this year, like, I saw your rapper. Like, nah, it must be somebody else. Now, you have to understand when you were a kid – how inconceivable that would sound to you. Yeah. Your your teacher's oh, a battle rapper, right? Yeah. So you'd be like, like you'd be you'd be wigging out when you see your, your teacher in Whole Foods or something. You'd be like, no, yeah. <laughs> so let alone a rapper, right? So I just be like, nah, you got somebody else, man. I'm a gym teacher. How could I do both? And they just be like, Oh yeah, I guess that is right. You know what I mean? I just <laughs> now at times where they do, I, you know, I'm like, look, I'm not kicking no 16 for you, nothing like that. You know, it is what it is. Like, and that's that. You know, so you I mean? never I, I had any issues with like the school board, like, hey, man, I heard this rap and you can't I say actually that. had a principal call me in the office probably like seven years ago. Okay. And uh, I, 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 that was one of the only times I said I was borderline nervous because I always okay. said this, man, if, if it comes down to like, a principal or something like, yo, you have to stop doing this. I'm like, no, yeah. flat out. Like, no, you're not going to, I'm not going to eat, sleep and shit school teaching. Like, I'm not going to do it. So she called me and I remember, because I was like, no, I don't think me and this principal are super tight. I was only at this school for like half a year. And she called me in the office. She's like, hey, I just want you to know that I saw, uh, you, you know, your battle raps or whatever. And you have, oh, okay. She was like, I love them. She's like, they're incredible. She's like, I would never show the kids. She's like, they're so incredible. I was like, all right, thanks. You know what I mean? But I've never had any. You know what? That's good, though, because I feel like that's such bullshit. Like, you should be able to separate your life from, like, your work. And, yeah. like, as long as you don't publish, as long as you're not wearing a T-shirt of a school you work at, you know, like, things like that. It's yeah. Bro, I've had, I've had T, like, staff members have bought, like, RD to chef shirts off me and worn them to school. Like, yo, do you sign them or no? No, 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 no. I don't. I don't do anything like that. But I mean, my face is on it. So, like, you know what I mean. <laughs> Again, man, I keep the two completely. You know yeah. what I'm saying. And I, and I, you know, I, I do get it. It's not. It's not like uh, you enjoy rock climbing, but you're also a teacher. It's not the same. I get it. Um, but again, man, like. I always go back with this little cheat. Like, how the fuck? I'm, I'm still chasing a dream here. So, who the fuck are yeah. you to tell me I can't tell yeah. them? Try to get me to motivate the dream chasers of the next generation, man. Don't can't believe you throw a rock climbing. I think you were pointing at me with this body. I can't even climb the steps. I'm <laughs> fucking. Uh, <laughs> listen, I, my college was slippery rock. They had a fucking rock wall, bro. I wanted no parts. Really? No oh my parts. god. If you don't mind me asking, where'd you get the degree from? Did you go to PA out in college? Yeah, Slippery Rock. About Slippery, oh, that's a university? I didn't yeah, know. Slippery Sorry, Rock but... University, bro. Yeah, like my, 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 my wife went out to Scranton, actually, so she was out, out near. Oh, uh, where, where the office is. Yep, exactly, yeah. where the office is. Bro, that's a binging that shit. Binging over yeah. this fucking quarantine, dog. This kid down here is it's a, a great dog, I'm not. 
I don't like it. It's, it's, it's not such in the a office. great show. Bro, it's so good, bro. I never... Like, the chemistry between Andy or uh, uh, Jim Dwight and Dwight. And, and Jim, yeah. It's, un, it's unlike two characters that's ever been in any other show. I'm trying to be more positive now, though. After the Nino Bless interview, he opened my eyes, man. I'm a miserable fuck, and I hate everything. Yeah. I mean, he well, really let, let me ask you this. Yes, sir. I'm gonna tell you a hot. I'm gonna tell you a hot take I've always had. Okay. That Tony Romo whoa, whoa. Got far oh, too oh. much flack. Tony you know, Romo slander. I love Tony Romo. I'm about to. Lo I'm about to love this. Please go <laughs> on. I always said that Tony Romo got yes. far too much flack. You remember the game against Denver when he threw for like yes, 400, 400 yards and 507 yards, five and he touchdowns, threw one, one pick to Danny or Trevath, Danny, whatever and his they name. Blamed him blamed and they lost like 49, no, 45, and 51 to 48. Of course, I, I fucking love remember Romo. that. I, I think they should have never got own. rid of Romo, bro. I agree. Tony I Romo. I love Romo. Tony, see, this he is just turning into a great podcast now. Tony he, Romo is the most underappreciated quarterback of our generation. Underappreciated. They, they, they didn't put anything around him, though. Defensively. They're defensively. Yeah, they Tony, Tony Romo never had a defense. He always put up 30 points a game. He's the most underrated quarterback of our time. He was a top five QB every year in the fucking league. I love Tony Romo, and I'm so glad you said that. I am so and happy. You know what? Do you have you anything nice to say about Kurt Heinrich or no? Uh, the Bulls cat, right? Yeah, they... white dude from the Bulls. <laughs> ah, I mean, I don't got a lot to say about him, but <laughs> right, whatever. not as passionate as my Tony Romo uh, I, opinion. That's I my guy. Romo, put put Romo Tony Romo, see. put Tony Romo on the Steelers from '03 to 2011. There's five Super Bowls. That's insane. Oh. No, there's not. Yeah, but you might have jumped that. out the window on that one. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'll edit that out for you, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> Leave so it all. Brian, Leave it all. What's crazy about this? So Brian's a Steeler fan, real, and yep. but you're from Pittsburgh. But you're a you're a Bucks fan, right? Right. He doesn't Congrats like Ben. Tom. Yeah, no, oh, he no, does. I love like Ben. Him. He just ben appreciates that, yeah. Tony Romo. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Romo was definitely a great quarterback. Yes. But mm -hmm. the thing yes. was, he, and the guy doesn't get the respect that he deserves. Not at all. Bro, and, he, if you, you put, but there's the thing. If you put him on a different team, a team with a defense, and the Steelers yes. had defense for years, if you Bro. give him that opportunity, he would have won a lot. If you, if he would have had to beat Brady to do it. Do I yeah. see Romo beating Brady? I'm not even. I'm not Maybe. even saying. I'm not even saying he would have won a Super Bowl. I don't even. It's not easy to win a Super Bowl. It's very hard. Like it's so hard. It's just he gets so much criticism. He didn't yeah. fucking deserve. That's my problem. Yeah, and for the, sure, the worst thing I would say that. Worst thing that happened to the Cowboys is Dak went into Pittsburgh and won that game. If Dak loses that game in 2016, they put Romo back in. But Dak was like 7-1 and one at the time. There's absolutely no way you could bench him. And I like Dak. But the best quarterback in this draft, mark my words, you heard it here first, is going to be Jordan Love out of Utah State. Give me the guy who leads a, a, a small college to victories, not the guy who leads a big college to victories. Tua was out, and they still put up 48 points points a game. Who's the last LSU quarterback who is good? Joe Burrow is going to be shit. I'm sorry. I'm telling you this, you got man. me a rant, man. You got me on a Tony Romo died by the interception against Denver. Yep. The Seahawks extra fucking yeah, point. Month. I know. Like, and and he, he was flawless in that game up until then. People forget yeah. about that. You know? Man, so it's Do one we, of those things where I think he just became unlikable because he dated Jessica Simpson. And yeah, how dare him? I liked Romo, man. I really fucking did. Oh, yeah, and everyone me. loves him now as an announcer. Of course. I liked him as a player, man. But yeah, that's real. Shit. Dude, the boy can move. Yeah. If you watch, me, you watch 2014 – I'm sorry, Brian. You watch 2014 games when Romo was playing, you realize how good he was. When you watch these replays they're doing, he was mm. threading the needle. He was making plays Dak couldn't even dream of making right now. Nice, bro. Frustrating. Frustrating. Wait, oh, so how – and I, no disrespect at all, but how did you – how are you from Pittsburgh and you're a Bucks fan? But yeah, he's so, a Penguins fan though. That's that's good. Yeah, I like that. And the Pirates too, which is rough. Yeah. Okay, that's so what's that, kid, but of all the teams. Just because I'm only asking because I've been to Pittsburgh. Yeah. And as a Steelers fan, I see the the Pittsburgh pride around the town. Oh yeah, yeah. You know, it's like no, such let a me huge say this, thing. Though. I'm not I'm not a Pittsburgh 
I don't like hate the Steelers. I like the Steelers a lot. Like, yes. if the Bucks aren't winning, uh, you know, I hope the Steelers win. Now that being said, I went to the Bucks Steelers Monday night game in Tampa, Tampa out. So what happened was when I was a kid, they had Joe Montana Sports Talk Football '93, right? Oh my God, it's yes. crazy, right? I'm so I used to play right? that shit, right? And I was like yeah. six or seven or whatever. And I used to play my older brother. Now, my older brother had a life. He was a couple years older. So he didn't play it as much. So I was playing all the time. So I was a fucking animal. So I'd whip <laughs> his ass all the time. And I remember, I, I swear to God to you, I said, pick the worst team in this game. This is 93, 1993 at the time. Yeah. So he picks this orange and white team. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, my dad, my house wasn't necessarily like a Steeler house. Like, I remember asking my dad, what was it like? I was like 17. Like, what was it like when the Steelers won the Super Bowl? And my dad was like, I, I don't know, dude. I was like, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you remember Franco, Joe Green? And he, he said to me, quote, he said, he's like friends of yours. He said, are any of these people paying the light bill, Trevor, or the gas? The Bronx <laughs> said, the people that throw a, a football around here? Yep. So I got bills to pay, dude. And I remember I was like, well, that's the last sports conversation we'll ever yeah. have, yeah. right? <laughs> so I'm playing as the Buccaneers, and I'm, I'm, he's a, he was a Niners fan. My brother was a Niners fan. My other brother was a Broncos fan. So – I smoked them with the Bucks because obviously all you got to do is just the same couple plays, right? So just to be yeah. a dick, every time we would play, I would pick the orange and white team, right? And uh, I just started fucking watching them. I was like, yo. You know. Now, when I say watching them, maybe two games a year yeah. would come on Fox, yeah. like bonus coverage, or like they might got like one TNT NFL. And then I got the 97, they changed their uniforms. They had the all-star done. So I was hooked this since then. Now, again – I like the Steelers a lot. I go, you know, go to Steeler games. I, you know, the Steelers are cold as sh shit. I love everything they got going on. Um, but I'll tell you what, if either you come to Pittsburgh, the, the stadium to go to is the Pirate Stadium. PNC Park. Oh, PNC, yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Because Heinz Field is – the ketchup bottle is cool, but outside of that, it's eh. – and then the – a Penguins game is the funnest. Yeah. I've been there. PNC I went Park. To, I went – I went to the Penguins game with my wife in 2013, right when they were on that 17-game winning streak, and they got Jerome Aginla that night. Mm, it was fire. And then the shitbag sucked dick in the playoffs. Same with Brandon Murrow, the Stars captain. Yeah. And he got swept by the Bruins. Miserable it's, time. But I got swept so by the fucking Islanders last year. So yeah, but you know what? We had two cups in four years. We could take a couple years off. You know I mean, what I mean? I wasn't mad at him. Now, bullshit, real. We need them now. I want to go for the throat. I want 10 more cups. I want to win every I felt year. good about this year, bro. I felt like they're on to something. And when we come back, we will be good this year. Hopefully, if shit comes back. You know what I mean? Fuck, man. It's just so, it's so crazy. Like, I, don't, I don't mean to go back to it. It's just crazy that you're a Bucks fan from Pittsburgh. And the, when, you, when you battled Chilla Jones and he was wearing the Patriots hat and you had the Steelers hat, I was like, oh, shit. He's from Pittsburgh, and he's a Steelers fan. This is like kind of like a – it's like that rivalry, you know? Yeah, and I just disappointed everybody by, like, being <laughs> really a Bucks fan. <laughs> but you know what? Like, I, I love – like, I love I – was, I was joking earlier today. Like, I'm always – anyone that ever drinks around me or is around me, I always bring up random Pittsburgh facts just to be, like, an obnoxious douche, right? Yeah. Like, just to, like, rep my hometown. So, like, earlier today I was joking, like – you Did know, you know the deer hunter was in Pittsburgh? Yeah, right, right, right. <laughs> yeah. Inspector Gadget was filled. In. <laughs> but I'm like, I apologize for Dennis Miller. Like, you can't win them all. Yeah. And we did give the world Dennis Miller, and he is fucking the least funny motherfucker. Like, I can't think of a – You didn't like him on Monday Night Football? Oh, oh he was <laughs> atrocious. <laughs> Who Dude, was he was the king of making jokes – that no one got that were so yeah. outdated with the most smug, arrogant, you know what I mean? <laughs> Who do you think's worse, him or Booger McFarlane? <laughs> uh, so I like Booger McFarlane, dude. His fingers are all fucked up. I don't mind him. He yeah, well, he won a Super Bowl with the Bucks, though. You got to remember that. Dude, he, he was underappreciated, bro. Yeah. He was a run stopper, bro. Like, a, he was a... He, 
He's a two-time Super Bowl champ. He won with the Colts in 06. Yeah, because Warren Sapp could Warren Sapp was not a run stop and defenser. And Simeon Rice damn yeah. sure wasn't stopping the fucking run. That defense was great though. Yeah, Derek Brooks. Simeon Sheldon, Rice. Wow, I forgot. Sheldon about that was Sheldon. Sheldon just got in the sprinter stance on the corner yeah. and yeah. blew by people. Derek Brooks. Yeah. yeah, and uh who's the guy who won the MVP? Dexter Jackson, right? Yeah. In the Super Bowl. Right. Was he, 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 was he, he the sucked. first? Was he, he the sucked. first he defensive like, MVP? No, Larry Brown won it in 97 versus Steelers. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah, and he was terrible. Larry Brown was terrible. He signed big yeah. money somewhere else. The, the um, Raiders. He signed with the Raiders. Him and Russell Maryland. Russell Maryland's a throwback name, yeah. yeah. That's, they said what, the Raiders, Oakland was where careers go to die. Yep. Yeah, a bunch, yeah. bunch of Eagles went there, too. Seth Joyner. All Seth those Joyner guys. was a monster, yeah. <laughs> Dude, my brother's a diehard Eagle fan, so I was a Cowboy fan in the same household. It was brutal growing up. Dude, they hate the Cowboys here in Pittsburgh. I don't even really hate them that much. I'm just mad that when they played the Steelers, it was such a great game that it's literally that Neil O'Donnell shit was so bad. Like, yeah. I remember at the time it was so bad, people ha were conspiracy theorists. They're like, oh, Donald <laughs> threw the Super Bowl. And I remember like, nah. And I watch it back. I'm not saying he did, but my God, are those three of the worst interceptions you might have. It was also Neil yeah, O'Donnell. He sucked. Bro, I mean, but his rating was like 93 that year, bro. Like, I know, he was but like. Efficient. I'm not saying he was airing it out. He was yeah. efficient. But bro, they held Emmett you know Smith what? to like 17 carries for like 53 yards. Yeah. That was that was a uh, that was Bam Morris. It wasn't even Jerome Bettis. Wow. Coked and, out of uh, his mind, dude. Yeah, Bam Morris. Did they have Yancey Thigpen too that year? Yo, that's Caught the yeah, touchdown yeah. right before the half, dude. Yep. yep. Oh my God. Bill Yo, Cowell was like, an onside kick. Onside kick. Start yeah. the second half, bro. What yeah, kind of balls you gotta have for that? And I haven't, I haven't seen an NFC championship in 23 years, so this is fun, you know? It's a great time for me. I'm just going to fucking kill myself later. Again, dude, and I'm not, I'm not catering to you, but I'm going to say a couple things. That was definitely a catch by Des Bryant. For I was at that 100%. game. I was at that game. My what? dad's a Packer fan, and we went to Lambeau, and what? I was at that game. You guys pulled some fuckery on Detroit the week before that seems True to story. get overlooked. You yeah, guys yeah. definitely pulled some fuckery on Detroit. We don't talk about that. And nobody <laughs> gave a shit because it was Detroit. Bro, that's like the whole shit with the Astros going on. Right? Oh, with the shooting scandal. So my, I come home, I go I go to my wife. I go, babe, we signed Garrett Cole. She was like, wasn't he a cheater on the Astros? I go, no, not him. Not him. He's fine. Yeah, he, he was yeah. a bucko too, right? Garrett yeah. Cole was a bucko. He just got fucking rocked yeah. in those wild cards yeah. left. You also got Sean Lee. Pittsburgh okay, guy. Yep. yep. I yeah, told you I get obnoxious with the shits. Yeah. Penn Sean State. Lee, Penn State yeah. kid from Pittsburgh. Yep. Played at Penn Hills High School. That's what I'm saying, man. We fucking, we Pittsburgh, we silently give shit to the world. I'm like New York and Boston who are obnoxious about their contributions. Pittsburgh is like, here's Jeff Goldblum. We're just going to let you. I'm not okay. thanking you for that one. <laughs> you know what? Why? You don't like Jeff Goldblum? No. He doesn't like Jeff Whoa, Goldblum. Oh, bro. It was, the, it was the guy I wish got eaten in Jurassic Park. I'm like that Pat Riley lookalike who ran to the shitter. Dude, he he's got eaten so a lot. quotable in Jurassic Park when he literally tells him, yeah. like, fuck with evolution, bro. Like, yeah. The best guy in Jurassic Park was the guy who talked about the Raptors setting him up, and he turned and said, clever girl, and got mauled to death. That was my guy. I liked Dude, him. The, the Goldblum slander will not be tolerated, bro. And I'm sorry. my man is a, is a comedian, right? So we give you Steve Byrne. You like Steve Byrne? Yep. Anthony yep. Jesselneck is Pittsburgh. Uh, yes, okay. he's hilarious. That's what okay, I mean. Okay, do, do I have to all right with this? Hold on. Do I have to throw New Jersey right now? Because we give a lot of talent. Bon Jovi. Yeah, but what, Susan no, no, no. Sarandon. But what, he's saying, what he's saying is, like, Did you say we're Susan obnoxious Sarandon? Yeah, Susan Sarandon. Did you what go are, from Bon Jovi did, to Susan I did, Sarandon? I did. That mom is a great movie, and it's underrated. I'm I will it. trade your – I'll will get. i tell you who I'll take. Rustin okay. Root, Pittsburgh. Okay, no, 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 no. no. Don't sleep on Rustin Root. Who Matt else Miller. Got? Who Matt else Miller. Got? We got Matt Miller, very far. Red man. Yeah, there Red you go. Jersey. Yeah, in your face. Red Kurt man. Kurt Angle. Okay. 
Who's fucking with Kurt Angle? Kurt Angle. <laughs> Who knows uh, Sam Martino? Brian, help me out. What the fuck? Hey, Tito Santana was a school teacher. Joe in- Montana. Joe Namath. Johnny United. Joe Theismann. New Jersey, uh, New Brunswick. Theismann's kind of a fun. Dwayne Jarrett. Aaron Donald. Did you really just say Dwayne Jarrett? I can't think of anyone, man. Help me out. <laughs> <laughs> that was dude. We, we, hey, we fucking Susan blessed Sarandon, you, bro. Susan Sarandon and Dwayne Jarrett, my two names. Dude, stop <laughs> saying Susan Sarandon. Dude. We There's could, no we could technically, even though he's from obviously from the West Coast, we could say Tupac because he lived in Newark for a good amount of time. He was mm-hmm. born there. But that Tupac might cause... Core? Yeah. I think he's from Baltimore. Who, Tupac? Wasn't he born in Baltimore? I thought it was Newark. I know he lived in Newark for some time. I'm not going to comment on this because I don't want the hate-filled comments to come in if we're wrong. So I'll just stick with my Susan Sarandon. Susan fucking Sarandon. <laughs> I got to look wife it up of now. Tim Robbins? Or that's, I think that's it, yeah. Wasn't Plus that his, his girl? All right, I got to ask you five things, a quick gun-to-your-head questions, real, before we let you go. These are non-rap questions. First thing that comes to your mind, because I know you're a music guy, you like a bunch of shit, pop culture-wise. Beatles or Beach Boys? Beatles, but I love the Beach Boys. Amazing, right? Yeah. Brian Wilson's incredible. Yep. Did you watch Love and Mercy with John Cusack? No. Cusack's been in a lot of shit. What was the one with the burger that was singing and shit? What? I Wasn't don't know. that John Cusack? He's in a movie with a burger that was like dancing and singing and shit? Oh, I don't know about that. That sounds Google crazy. Google it. Yeah, I kind of have to watch that. All right, Metallica or Guns N' Roses? Anybody but Metallica. Guns N' Roses. Metallica. Really? All right, all right. James Shit. Hatfield is terrible. Rookie of the Year or Sandlot? Sandlot by a fucking country mile. Okay. George Carlin or Richard Pryor? Uh-oh. Um, I, I like Carlin. I would, neither of them are my favorite, but I like Carlin over Pryor. All right, South Park or The Simpsons? Dude... I, I would say South Park, but South Park's allowed to do so much more. You know what okay. I mean? It's like comparing Dumb and Dumber and Superbad or some shit, right? Or like, Susan Sarandon and Joe Montana. Or like <laughs> Susan Sarandon and a steaming <laughs> pile of shit. <laughs> <laughs> All right, last one. This, this is going to decide whether or not we can be friends going forward. Outback Steakhouse or Applebee's? Really? That question. Yes. If I'm being honest, both of them depend more on the, the tall, thin blue moon. You know what I'm saying? Like the okay. beer brings me in. Here, I, it, I'm, I'm going to the two, I guess, Applebee's, dude. Yes. Yeah. All Apple right. Slightly more white trash, slightly more I, my kind Exactly. Of shit. Slightly more yeah. half price swings after 10. I have no advertisement with them. I'm not getting paid by them. But Maybe their boneless buffs are amazing. Yeah, no, I, I would go Applebee's, but it's it's not something I would be I would feel great about. It's like the fucking election, you know what I mean? I wouldn't I wouldn't be excited about like it. That's another, that's another thing you gave. That's another thing you guys gave us in 2016. The state of Pennsylvania. What did we give you guys? A what? No, just you went red. Just saying. Oh, did they? <laughs> yeah, you did. <laughs> well, I'm we fucking not even up on shit, bro. Like, no, it's alright. I'm not. I'm not on side anyway. I don't care. In 08, I voted for uh, – The Kane or Obama? Not 08. 04. Is that Bush it? or John Kerry? Kerry? John Kerry, yeah. And I remember leaving and thinking, dude, why did you do that? You don't have a fucking clue what you're talking about. You know what? I did the same thing, bro. I was 18. I was a senior. I voted for Bush because I was like – Oh, shit. He was president before. I kind of like him. I'm going to go into the voting booth and just vote. And I left, and Jersey went blue. I go, why did I vote? What, like, what did oh I do? Oh, my God, bro. Like, I, I don't even – like I said, man, I, I, I don't – it's just too, too many fucking rabbit holes to go down, man. I'd rather yeah. discuss why Tony Romo was underrated. I, I honestly yeah. am a firm believer of brain capacity – and if I die knowing that I can't list all the fucking judicial branches, but I know that Tony Romo threw for 500 yards against the Broncos and got the bang blame for an interception, yep. I'll take that. 